Just go down to. I got it. It's recording. Okay. okay. Um, I, 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 the question was, what do you think about? We talked last week about Latin America and China and what's happening with a lot of Latin American countries, how they're viewing China as opposed to the U.S. Uh, you think it's a similar uh, situation that's going on? Yeah, I do. You know, so China, China is doing what we used to do, you know, move into other countries, have an influence, et cetera, for good or bad. Mm -hmm. You know, so that one guy was basically making a good point. And I think the, the rub is, you know, he says we are gain, we are uh, gaining from our alliance, from our alliance with, with uh, Phil, the Philippines. Then on the on the international, you know, the liberal side, you know, the Obama administration said we, we can't put up with these these uh, these uh, civil rights problems, you know, this the, the, these killings and all. And if you push it, they're going to go more towards China, you know. And so you know, it's a hard hard decision to make. So it's a delicate balance based on the domestic issues in the Philippines with. Duterte's Duterte's uh, approach to the drug thing, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what a, what Biden would do, or what you know, what, but you probably have to make noise about th these, uh, you know, th these atrocities. But that doesn't, you know, you make noise and then kind of keep the alliance together. Okay. Uh, any other comments, Marianne? What do you think? Well, when I read the essays last week about China in Latin America. I kept thinking and that was written two or three years ago. And Trump, of course, was famously for America first. He pretty much ignored Latin America. And I think this issue has a lot of those same elements. Trump probably didn't really pay that much attention. And right now, we don't really know what the Biden administration's attitude and what their policies are going to be. Okay. Um, Jason, you got a comment? Well, China is a neighbor of the Philippines, at least it's certainly a closer neighbor than the United States of America. 98% uh, of the US population couldn't find the Philippines on a map. <laughs> True. And, uh, it's all about uh, who, what story is, uh, takes pre precedent. And uh, we deal with so many bad guys. Uh, um, I don't say that it's right what this guy does, but we've been letting people get by with that sort of stuff since uh, the beginning of American uh, diplomacy. Um, I do think, is this guy's name pronounced Duterte or D Duterte? Duterte. I believe. I Is mean, that right, Ed? Yeah. Duterte. Yeah, he's, uh, he's just an echo. He's like, it's amazing. He's just another echo chamber of the populist Trumpian kind of ideas. And except that he's mixed in uh, extrajudicial killings and, you know, drug wars. But um, how bad were the drug wars in the Philippines? What, I, I, don't, I mean, we don't even know what was happening there before. We only know it because the Duterte uh, took a strong stance against it, and uh, he's trying to become the president for life. Okay. Like uh, it, huh? Okay. That's what I, I just see it. I mean, it's 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 historically accurate that there are people that have been the rulers of the Philippines that have stayed for a very long time. Okay. That's all. I don't uh, know. Larry Orcutt, got any comments? On, unmute, please. Larry, he's not there. There you go. Hi. Oh, yeah. Larry knows. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> it makes me think back of when Sukarno was running Indonesia. Yeah. What got him in trouble is he was shopping between the Russians and the United States to get the best deal for his country mm -hmm. on everything. And I think uh, he didn't get away with that. He eventually oh. got overthrown. Did he get overthrown? I'm sorry, Jason, what? Did he get overthrown, uh, Sukarno? Well, or Suharto? I don't know which one. Sukarno came before Suharto. Okay, yes, yes, I thought so. And uh, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. That was when we had a very active CIA in the 50s and 60s. Um, I think uh, Duarte can shop for the best deal and not get in trouble like would happen 
60 years ago. So that's what they'll do. Mm -hmm. It's a big part of it. I, I, I think that you have to divide this up between real politics and uh, uh, righteousness. Okay. We want to take a righteous position, but the, but the Filipinos want the best deal they can make. Uh, Ed, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Um, you know, to say that the Philippines has uh, many problems is an understatement. I mean, definitely a lot of problems, both inherently and outside. Um, but, and it's also brought on by the fact that you know, there is multiple um, ethnicity along with geographical distances. Mm -hmm. uh, causing, you're talking about 7,100 islands um, in, in particular. Just like any, I would say, I don't want to make any generalization, but particularly for the Philippines, it remains stagnant. That's my own view anyway, mm -hmm. even though there's been some advances lately in a way. Um, to the point that everyone has, has been uh, proven in the video, uh, too many corruption, graft and corruption is still ongoing, perhaps maybe in a little way. The, the privilege are still the privilege, there's still some elite. Believe it or not, there is still an underground system. You know, they call it the NPA, the New People's Army. Oh. Uh, that is still present. I think one of the, I, I believe that there is still a strong relationship with the United States uh, because the uh, colonialism uh, has, has really uh, per, uh, pervaded, you know, into the, um, uh, the Filipinos in general, um, you know, the the one thing that I think is going to attract is just like anything else would be the economy. And whoever can give and can really um, uh, express the, the fact that economy is growing without any kind of uh, significant trade off. Uh, I'm sorry to say that it's, it's kind of like a um, <laughs> they, they're, they're, they're waiting. It's not, it's not to say that it is one-sided because I think the Philippines can offer something, but uh, but at least you know provision of jobs, provision of um, you know um, infrastructures and things like that, uh, without too much of a trade-off. <laughs> there, of course, there will be an imbalance they will see that this is an ally you know uh, you the Chinese I, I I have some doubts that if they continue to do this that the Filipinos are going to really um, you know stay with that kind of uh, approach or policy I think that they will end up and we can see that probably hey the United States is probably our most loyal ally you know with you know right. and um, in fact the abolition of the those two bases as far as I'm concerned um, was not really unanimously um, you know accepted but it was more out of quote unquote like a false pride hey we are independent and we have to be really independent by getting rid of all of this but not knowing that hey, we're still really not independent, you know? I mean, we cannot even govern our own people. Okay. All right, uh, Ken, what are your thoughts? I think like, like so many other um, of the topics that, that we've seen, it's a very complicated uh, situation. Many variables come into play. Um, you know, nobody's right, nobody's wrong. It's just a very uh, intricate relationship. Um, you know, they're looking out for their side, we're looking out for our side. It was complicated, as was mentioned earlier, by the fact that that Trump uh, and, and his hands-off policy and America First um, allowed um, China to build a vacuum even more than they had been previously. So, um, uh, no easy solutions here. 
Okay, good point. Uh, Mike, you had your hand up a minute ago. Yeah, you know, I was just kind of thinking that this uh, South China Sea dispute, I imagine that we're pretty forceful in supporting the Philippines. I don't know, but there's a wedge issue. You know, if you, you, you should, I think we're, we're probably already doing this. You come on strong with the Philippines. We're going to, we, you got a point, we're backing you up. And I don't know if that's the case now, or I mean, if, I, I'm sure it wasn't under Trump. I don't know. But uh, I, I'm just thinking about how that could be used as a wedge issue. Okay. Nancy, you have any thoughts? Uh, when I read the chapter, <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness, it's such a, a long history and going back and forth. Um, to me recently, the Philippines have just been invisible. I mean, we don't hear anything about it on the news. So I'd, I'd like to know what, what the State Department's, well, what the new administration policy will be. Okay. Because I, I think it's a place that certainly has, probably has more in common with the U.S. than China. Okay. Uh, and, you know, one of the comments that in, on the video, one of the interviewed person said that, um, I can't read, my, I made a note, but I can, I can never read my writing. Uh, oh, uh, something about the people were, oh, the leader, the people were waiting for so he has a lot of support. And what do you think the, uh, how about comparisons between Duterte and Trump in, in the populist <laughs> approach? What do you think? Everybody's laughing and who's yeah. laughing? Who's laughing the most? <laughs> well, it's, very, it's parallel, man. It's, yeah. you know, I saw du, uh, he, uh, du, 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 Duterte was kissing the flag. Reminded me when Trump oh, you know, <laughs> hugged the flag. Yeah, I mean it's a populist movement. It's like the the film right. said across the world. Well, you think the populist movements, of course, are sparked by there are problems people are frustrated with, big problems the way they see them, and they want answers. And that's essentially as the, as the one quote I just mentioned is the leader the people were waiting for. In other words, we have this in effect this corruption, this drug problem, and so on. So you have a strong man that comes in. And he starts to make changes. So uh, that's what people are supporting. Is that pretty much mm -hmm. the scenario? Larry Mortsoff, you're shaking your head. Um, yes, I think that is a, a, a very good uh, explanation of it. Uh, uh, and uh, Duterte, whatever, however he pronounces his name, I think he's doing a lot more for the Philippines it, with regard to infrastructure and the, the, his, the economy than Trump ever did for America. Uh, just from what we saw in this particular film, and also I'd like to just make another point, uh, uh, building on what Mike said, that the fact that the United States is running these patrols in the South China Sea uh, it is really a shield against mili any mi military aggression from China. Uh, al although I don't think that was is now in the works uh, at all. Okay. Any comments on that, Jason? What happened? Larry's an ex Navy man. I thought they were active. Are they active or not active? The the Navy. The the American Navy is making regular patrols in the South China Sea. Uh, yeah. There's uh, there was something in the newspaper. I think this past week about. We have a couple aircraft carriers and other ships uh, going into contested areas that the Chinese don't wish us to do. Uh, and uh, so we, we very much have a military presence there. And, and uh, I, I think uh, a lot of people in the Philippines would, would be very comfortable with that. Okay, well, that's what, he, obviously he has, he has uh, protesters too are talking about that because of China. Larry Orcutt. Yeah, I was going to just ask Larry. He would know better than I. I know part of the reason we abandoned Clark Air Base in Subic Bay was Mount Puna, well, the volcano destroyed the air base. So we'd have to rebuild the whole thing. That's about the time the Philippines wanted to be more independent anyway. But Subic Bay is probably still there. 
I don't know if it's reusable. I don't know if it's a commercial port now. I just don't know much about that. Larry would know much more than I would. And I wonder, you know, if, you wonder if uh, about the time U.S. can bring more warships in there for visits, or is it all a, a port bay now, or is the China be making naval visits, et cetera? And then backing up into the South China Sea, you know, I'm just thinking that's a pivot point that we might look for if we watch Subic Bay. But China, South China Sea is complicated. It's it's uh, Philippines, as they were saying. It's it's uh, China. It's Taiwan. It's Vietnam. And a lot of the uh, a lot of the incursion is commercial. It's fishing. It's just a little bit of military. Of course, China's there's more land area every day because China keeps filling in these islets that you put runways in, et cetera. So I, it's a, uh, you talk about the Philippines and U.S. being complicated. That's a five way right there amongst all those countries in the South China Sea. And we're, I don't know that we're doing much. Uh, we, we sail through. We never stop. <laughs> Tony, do you have any thoughts? Tony? Yeah, I do. Uh, uh, first of all, I think Philippine, uh, the Philippines are important uh, strategic location for uh, air bases uh, because of uh, the fact, you know, we China and uh, it gives us, uh, uh, we have a lot of history there. I believe we have a lot of, um, uh, when I flew to Vietnam, I landed uh, in Manila first and spent, uh, we spent the night at the airport in Manila. And then, so it's like a stopping place for refueling and I guess, and, uh, and I, and they speak English. Uh, we have a relationship with the Philippines, especially those that come here and live here in the United States. Um, when we, uh, when I was in Vietnam, all mostly all the entertainers came from the Philippines. Sure. They sang beautiful, uh, uh just like they, they couldn't speak English, but they sang in English and they sounded just like the They're cover uh, bands. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, really? That's what they're they great entertainers. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, I think Philippine, uh, Philippines are uh, important to the United States. We lost a lot of uh, soldiers there during the Japanese uh, war. And I, uh, I'm sure that in their hearts, they, they would rather prefer the United States than China. Okay, but, uh, go ahead, Jason. It's, it's always good to remember that in order to negotiate having two sides of interest, the United States and China, you're likely to get a little bit better deal. Um, I, uh, I, one thing it, it, in, in that, in that uh, documentary, uh, they, were, they were talking about infrastructure development, how the Chinese were helping them. But in fact, the Chinese were sending people in to the Philippines, not, not training Philippine people to do the work. And I noticed, I mean, so like, it could be giving China a place to pour uh, excess population into. Um, but the Philippines really needs, a, you know, training and development stuff and to become their own uh, vertically integrated uh, infrastructure. Uh, well, okay. Uh, you know, one comment on the film, uh, I forgot who it was that was interviewed, but mentioning that uh, the uh, their economy is is really supposedly really booming, one of the strongest ones in the, in the world, which I was kind of surprised to hear about that, where, um, but, and she attributed it to China. What are your thoughts on that, uh, Mike? Yeah, I, you know, I, I I was a little bit off the off the subject here, but did they say that on the first election, Duarte got he uh, you know he didn't get a majority. He was in whether it was a thirty percent or something. yeah, he had plurality, right? And then in the second election, what did they didn't say ninety percent, did they? Eighty percent. Was it eighty percent? That what it was? It yeah. I mean, yeah. that's pretty darn high. Yeah. It was that was that. Uh, when they talked about the 80 percent was that a national election or was that going back to a mayoral election so that was oh i don't remember it was national yeah i don't no, know well 
I'm not no, sure. the, 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 it, it, no. Ed, Ed, I think was it mayoral election, Ed? Yeah, may, mayoral and I, I think yeah. the uh, uh, part of the Congress too, uh, if I'm not mistaken. You know? Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, but like Ed said, there's a lot of problems, I'm sure. And it's hard to separate what's demagoguery versus what are legit problems. You know, he's using just like every demagogue does. He, he heightens the problems and, you know, and for votes, you know, I mean, that, that's not unusual. So I don't know what, you know, what, if the economy's booming, that's probably the biggest thing. Well, they also mentioned too, I thought in correlation with that, uh, the, the average commute is three hours each way. I'm thinking you should be able to traverse the, the, whole, the entire Philippines in that period of time <laughs> if there wasn't any traffic, obviously. Um, I thought that was kind of amazing that, and that's part of the, part of the people's frustration, certainly as it would be, um, along with the, the drug situation and the, and how it's being handled, frankly, and so on. Uh, yeah. So what, what do you think about the, um, uh, you know, it's a fact that China, again, is they're, and they're, they're, they're China's neighbors. They're pretty far away from us, obviously. Uh, so it's a logical thing for them to, and they've got to do that because of their geographic location. They don't want to, you know, tick off China on anything. So, and plus they're getting a lot of help. And China is not being um, critical of, of their internal human rights approaches. Yeah. Well. So, they're get, so they're getting all this financial support and infrastructure building and so on with kind of no questions asked. Is that, I mean, that's, that's a plus for Philippines, don't you think? What do you think? I think you're asking the question, you're making a statement as if an American human rights uh, group was making it. Uh, I don't think that the Chinese care. And, no, uh, right. And, uh, and, uh, and I, I well, Trump didn't that. Trump didn't care either, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, he didn't. That, he thought he thought the way they were handling the drug situation was absolutely fine. Yeah. 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 I mean, in, in the text, uh, you know, the text that we read, which is really good, <laughs> they talked about the Gene Kilpatrick factor. In other words, you support dictators, and I mean authoritarian governments and dictators, as long as it's in our interest. <laughs> They don't want to go messing around internal internal problems, you know. You want to keep the alliances together. Typically, right. And that's our approach to South America. Yeah. Did you say approach everywhere? Everywhere. <laughs> right. That's a good point. But uh, hey, well, it was more than it is. But uh, yeah. I looked that up because I couldn't recall having heard about the Kirkpatrick doctrine, and what what it amounted to was. I don't want to bore everybody. Maybe all dead. Maybe all know. But quickly, it was our dictators are better than your dictators. You know, we uh, we have authoritarian ones, but you all have totalitarian ones. And so, at some point in time, it'll be easier for our to our authoritarian ones to help the transition to democracy down the road. That's why we, the Soviets, we were better than the Soviets. I don't know if that's what happened in Europe, etc. When the uh, when the uh, Warsaw Pact fell apart, et cetera. But that, okay. that, I've never heard that before. I don't recall that. And that's sure I understand it or believe it made any difference. But okay. you guys get credit. Uh, uh, yes, Ken? <laughs> well, I have more of a question uh, for the group. What's, what's the role and influence of the press in the Philippines? Do, do we know that? And I'm, and I'm kind of sitting here thinking, okay, so Duarte, uh, what's he mean to me? What I knew coming into this meeting, the sum total, <laughs> pardon my ignorance, ignorance, but the sum total of what I knew about this was that, that <laughs> our dog. dog. <laughs> I think he's disagreeing with you, Ken. Okay. <laughs> That must be it. <laughs> I got, I got no influence. Uh, the sum total of what I knew about Duarte was that he killed drug users, and I think it was drug user. I think it's drug users, not drug dealers. Am I right? I think it was both. Both. Well, and vigorous, uh, vigorous uh, uh, extirpation of the drug culture was uh, one of the things that the communist Chinese did in the first ten years. Okay. In power. You know, that's a pretty uh, easy way. That's a pretty easy way to get yourself in the papers a lot. Yeah. 
You know, well, who's going to argue with that? You know, okay. only people that analyze that a couple, three, four levels down into the causation and so forth. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, it could be said, don't quote me, the only good drug user, you know, right. you can finish the sentence. Well, uh, and that's, and now what I know about it is that there's a terrible traffic problem. Yeah. There. Well, goes a little bit further than that, but that's a good start. Yeah. And so. and that the Philippines is just kind of trading has been trading dependencies, um, uh, frankly, okay. either on China or in the United States. And China has a one up because they're really close. We're mm -hmm. not. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, uh, yes. Oh, somebody you, said something. Yeah. Can I? Uh, I did. You, somebody said something about. Uh, what's the role of the press in the Philippines? Yeah. Right, that was Ken. Yeah. I would expect that they either acquiesce to the ruler or die. It's that kind of a culture. That, that would be my guess, but I... <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I just think that it's, it's not some place you can step a day after day hammer Duterte on the front page of your, uh, you know, suburban newspaper, and expect to get home that evening. I just think it's a dangerous place for the journalists. Well, they there has been some criticism in the press, and they showed one lady walking yeah. by who was a who was a uh, press person yeah. and uh, part of the press that uh, is puts a lot of negatives out about what Duarte is doing and how he does it, et cetera. So it, there is some activity there. But it's not quite as bad as Putin's Russia yet, where they mysteriously supposedly have accidents. As far as I know, maybe somebody knows if they've actually killed anybody in the press for being negative. I think you can that have is a question. You have freedom until you don't. Yeah. Uh, Mary Ann, what do you think? What are your thoughts on the press concerning Philippines? Well, I, I have just been wondering when Duterte is up for re election. Mm -hmm. There's any opponent who's making any headway against him. I don't know if anybody knows. Anybody know about I, this? Uh, Ed, think, do you know? Uh, as far as I know, uh, the presidency is only for six years. And uh -huh. he cannot, as, I'm not sure whether he can apply for re-election or not, because I think the maximum services for six years. But then the, the funny situation about this is like all you have to do after six years is that you can lay low and become, you know, a, a candidate for other office. And uh -huh. then, for example, we can become a senator and then go back again, you know, for the next election year. Um, so there's, no, there's no limit then on how many times he could run for the presidency. That's right. As you okay. probably are aware, one of the previous presidents, uh, the corrupt uh, Joseph Estrada, mm -hmm. became a mayor. And then after being a mayor, went back again to become, you know, uh, applied again to be, um, you know, for, uh, for re-election. Okay. Uh, um, that country. Yeah. Uh, Ken, do you have any other thoughts on this? Well, you had asked earlier about uh, if, if there was a, a parallel be between Trump and Duterte and uh, one of the things I was thinking of while watching that that presentation was um, was that if Trump were afforded a second term, I think we would see more of a trend towards more severe. Um, um, I think that we'd be going more in a direction towards wh where the, they are now if he were afforded a second term. I think I think he would. Um, would extend his authoritarian uh, to, to, to tendencies um, towards uh, the, the, even more towards the oppressed, and um, and and I think uh, we'd be having a whole different conversation now. Okay, uh, based on what Ken just mentioned, what are your thoughts on that? As far as if he had, I don't want to get too far off the subject, but there are parallels here. Um, if there was another term for Trump that he would go in that direction that Ken is indicating, what do you think? 
Anybody? Oh, uh, you know, I thought when 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 he had that big automatic rifle there and he was displaying it, I thought, hey, well, there's his campaign, <laughs> his campaign commercials, you know, like yeah. like here. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Well, let, let me clarify what Ed said. Is it the case that under normal conditions, the law today that you can have one term, it's like Mexico, you can have one term of six years, but you're not allowed to immediately succeed yourself for a second term. You'd have to go do something else and come back. That's what the law is. That what you said? That's that's as far as I know. Um, the same I believe with uh, uh, mayoral candidates. Uh, you know, they they have like a maximum uh, number of years or term. But they can, uh, well, I, I think you know, yeah. I think the idea there is they didn't allow re-elections in some countries, so there would never, well, I guess right now there's no accountability as, as it stands. It would be even worse. If Trump got a second term, his accountability, <laughs> the accountability would be uh, less than it was the first term, if that's possible. But uh, that, uh, it's an interesting twist, I think. I've got another question here. Basically, some, some of you already brought this up. Um, now that Biden is in office, um, what do you think Biden's approach, his, excuse me, his administration uh, will do in its relationship with what's going on in the Philippines, between the Philippines and China? What are your thoughts? Nancy, what do you think? Any thoughts on that? Well, I was just looking it up on uh, Google and there's a U.S. News and World Report. Um, let me see, it says something. U.S. and Philippine officials met on Thursday to settle differences over the it's the forces agreement, the first under U.S. President Joe Biden's administration, which has reaffirmed the alliance in the face of China's growing assertiveness in the South China Sea. Duterte said the U.S. is free to advance their troops in our land. We do not like it because we want to remain neutral but the exigency of the moment requires their presence here. I am okay with that. But he also wants the U.S. to pay. Okay. So he, he wants, he's, so would you say Duterte is, he's trying to obviously uh, assert Philippine independence more than it has been in the past based on, based on the situation with China with, again, the situation with China is, I'm going to say in the scheme of things is relatively new. I'm talking about the last couple of decades. Uh, so you think that's, what do you think about that? Tony, what do you think? Well, uh, mm -hmm. be like Trump, have them pay for our support. <laughs> <laughs> oh, build a wall, right? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. So, um, Trump made, made a statement and, and, and stood by it by having all those countries pay their fair share. Now, if we are going to be there for supporting uh, the Philippines against China, then I would, whether I'd want to pay or not, because it could be worth billions to the taxpayers. But we, we did pay before. Did we? We had bases. I'm sure we must have paid something. Or were they taken over into some revolutionary act? I don't know. Do you know what that is, Tim? Is it? Uh, I think, um, yeah, I'm sure. Well, obviously, we contributed to the economy by them being there with Clark, for example, and, and the, yeah. the Clark, naval facility at Subic Bay. Subic Bay, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, um, <clears throat> I think uh, really what uh, will happen under the Biden administration. Uh, is will establish stronger diplomatic relations and, and perhaps we'll have more military cooperation exercises and payment will probably come in the form of some military and economic assistance, uh, uh, but, but, but in a very small amount, uh, the, the economic assistance uh, more in the nature, I'm going to say, of Peace Corps uh, type, of, if that would be welcomed in in the Philippines. I think I think that the Philippines is has that traffic jam because 
most of the industrialization uh, and sophisticated account economic are in a couple of you know is in a city is in one one place or in a couple of places I, I don't have any idea what I only know what the the metropolitan area around Manila may be like but what's the rest of the country like yeah. Ed you Ed you had a comment yeah Ed, yeah. yeah well as far as traffic is concerned that's that has always been a problem because the issue has been build, 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 and yeah. the roads to come later, you know? Right. Mm. So it's just like uh, you, you build and then you just make, uh, you know, uh, make some inroads as to how the traffic is going to flow. Right. Okay, so it, was, it wasn't a coordinated effort then? No, not, not it's a very poor urban planning. To Should be, have been the opposite, almost. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I see. Yeah. And, and that happens because if you are, say, a good, I mean, a privileged landowner, or what have you, or you're a big company, and I, I want to build, you know, a set of condominiums all over the city, uh, and you pay the government, then, okay, you're given a permit, you know, so mm -hmm. the issue has to be resolved. That's a separate issue. I agree with Larry, however, that, you know, the, I think Biden administration has to be very strong you know, not not just militarily or economically, but to to tell the Philipp to the Philippines that listen, we have some other allies in the in the area. Right. We have Vietnam, we can have South Korea, we have Japan, you know, and things like that. You're just a, you're you're just a small fish, and the Filipinos have to understand and realize this. Mm. You know, it's like a you know, you, you, you cannot become like an ally uh, to a, a, a communist uh, government and think that, oh, this is the one who's giving us the, you know, uh, quote unquote, the freedom, because that is very superficial. And, 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 and now I think that the sentiment of the Filipinos are not, are away from that. They say, yeah, I think the Chinese are are in here for something else, you know, not not really for our own well-being. Okay, so they'll have their interest at heart. Kathy, you had, uh, you looked like you had a question or comment. I, I wanted to let you know I invited my neighbor and friend who works for at t but has worked in Manila. Her name oh. is Lisa Myers and she is on. <laughs> Hi, Myers iPad. And she might have, Hello. Quite a bit about uh, the, the working conditions of people there and other things. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, what's Hi. your first name? Lisa, how are you? How are you? Great. Okay. I have a conference call with India to come here to talk about this because oh, when good. Kathy calls, here I am. Um, well, you know, go ahead. I was, so I was there from 2010 to 2012, uh, you know, offshoring work to Manila. <laughs> And then I went back in 2018 to uh, do some additional work. I, I think what's interesting is, um, yeah, the, the working conditions, the driving. I heard uh, the gentleman talk about the roads and they have developed quite quickly to be a, a Western um, uh, community. You know, they have the, the area of um, Makati and some of the other areas have just grown you know, exponentially, and it's true, the roads, kind of even like here in the U.S., we're growing, but our infrastructure can't handle, you know, the traffic from all the building. Uh, what I love about Manila is the people are very resilient, um, and um, it's, um, I think it's going to take a while, and I agree, I think the Biden administration needs to come in with a strong foothold, but let the country know that, you know, we're here to support them. I think we've had so much, you know, push and pull and tug that it's, you know, it's difficult for countries, you know, right now to even trust us. But I think that once we get our foot in the door, you know, with them again, I, I think it's gonna be, you know, it's, it's gonna be a great relationship. It's gonna be a great relationship. So we could build on that. Obviously we have over a hundred year uh, connection yeah. with the Philippines, some not so good, right. some good. Uh, but you feel that that overall the the, the the relationship has been pretty good, generally speaking, particularly in in, in later decades. Obviously, we've experienced. Yeah, and, uh, it'll it'll help. 
Yeah, I, what I think is interesting is AT is recently we've moved quite a bit of work out of the Philippines. I think um, we just moved 1,000 jobs. I did last year to India. I think one thing that we need to work on that you know my company has feared is you know security. Mm. Cybersecurity is huge. Mm. Cybersecurity is huge. Mm. Um, could you tell me what what the comparison in labor rates are by India to the Philippines? Why you moved to India? Um, you know, initially when we were, I, I'll just I'll backtrack a little bit. Initially, when we moved worked to India, probably 10, 15 years ago, it was labor rate. But then, you know, the U.S. customer had quite a bit of complaints because of the language barrier. So then we kind of shifted, and we moved quite a bit of work to. Um, India, we've moved work to Costa Rica. We've set up our own AT&T offices in countries like Bratislava, you know, in, in uh, Czech Republic and those areas. Um, but the labor rate and the, and the country is getting better at their English communication skills. So the labor rate is significant. It's probably about, you know, I, I, I can't tell figures, but I'll say the reduction is um, about 50%. So you can buy a person for $3 an hour in the Philippines and a dollar and a half in India? Yeah, it's not quite that cheap. I mean, it's a little bit more than three bucks an hour in India. I mean, in the Philippines, it, it's, uh, um, well, let's just say it's about 50%. It's, it's more than that, but still a 50% savings is quite a bit. And you know, India is finally taking it serious that, you know, our customers want to speak to someone that they can understand. Um, I have a call center in India in Hyderabad and um, I also have a back office team. So I have about 125 people in India. And one thing that the uh, vendor there that we use, they are listening. Um, we restaff official um, work movement. We restaffed 50% of the people because of the English speaking. So they're listening. Let me, um, a quick story on that. <laughs> this is yeah. uh, several years ago, I had to call a computer or help desk for something. And and uh, so, you know, I guess there's you doing some stuff and there's some downtime. And I asked him, I said, well, where, where am I talking to you from? Where are you from? He says, I'm in Manila. The guy sounded like he was from Ohio, frankly. Right, right. And yeah. uh, he said, I'm, I'm in Manila. I said, oh, really? I said, you know, I know Manila is like, uh, 13 hours ahead of us. I said, so maybe you can tell me what happened in the world in the last 13 hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting. I love that story. It's interesting. You know, I, if you've talked, my experience in the last couple of years, if you're talking to anybody for United Airlines that you can't do it on your own a computer, you're talking to somebody from Manila. Mm -hmm. And their English is really good. You can always tell when you're talking to somebody from India. I can remember 20 years ago, I had asked, we had some extension, <laughs> extended thing I won't get into, but I asked the guy, well, where are you people, where are you from? Because I was talking to two or three people on one of those service desk arrangements. He said, Reno. It's, I never believed they were from Reno. Don't give me that. But anyway, the, the service you've got from Manila, in my experience, is excellent English, and that is totally on your own. Yeah, it's um, when, when when we moved the work to India, um, and, my, and I'm not in the cell phone business, by the way. I'm in uh, uh, large networks and circuitry design, so our customers purchase, you know, Ethernet circuits that can light up a city. Um, it's on it's it's global high speed data, but um, um, God, I lost my train of thought. Um, you were just taught, oh, I, the call center team asked me, so what name do you want us to use? Right. And I said, I want you to use your name, but I want you to speak it clearly. Because one thing about that drives people crazy in the United States, if I know that I'm speaking to Sandeep or to Nikhil, I don't want to hear John. I don't. And I said, if you speak clearly and slowly, right, um, 
we will understand you. We have people in our own country that we can't understand, <laughs> right? <laughs> they can be in the mountains somewhere, right? I, you know, I said, but if you speak very clearly and very slowly, um, they will understand you. And I said, and, you know, it's a difference of age group. I always, um, I'm on a call right now, actually, that I stepped away from because somebody who works for me is running it. Um, we're listening to the call recordings. So we have them listen to call recordings every day and then we audit them and we just randomly pick call recordings and we answer about 15,000 phone calls a month. And so in the call recordings, that is the very first thing that we listen to. How do you sound when you pick up the phone? Because they're in the middle of the night. Imagine if we picked up a call at 2 a.m. every day, right? And, and, and now in the work from home solution, they are in, you know, their work from home solution is not the same as our work from home solution, right? With COVID, they're in very small spaces. So it's, it's very difficult. Okay. Uh, excuse me. We're running out of time. So we need to wrap up. I want to go through quickly, everybody take about 30 seconds. Give me your final comments. I'm going to start with Nancy. Oh, well, this, this uh, session got me interested and I'm going to pay attention to the news now <laughs> about, regarding the Philippines, well, where otherwise I wouldn't have. Okay. So now you'll be able to find it on a map, right? Oh, I could do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Larry Orcutt. Well, I, I think the uh, South China Sea will be an interesting thing to watch. It affects more than Philippines, but that, that will be the indicator I'll look, be looking at uh, early in the Biden administration. Okay. Like I say, there are many. All right. Tony? Well, I, it's a really good session. I had very little knowledge about uh, what was going on other than the uh, uh, killing of drug druggers, druggies. And I would like to know if the drugs have been curtailed based on uh, mm. his action there in the Philippines. And uh, next week we have uh, artificial intelligence and data. So join us then. Okay, I'm full of artificial intelligence. <laughs> uh, Mar Mary Ann, what are your thoughts? Final quick 30 seconds. Well, I hope the Biden administration will rebuild our alliance with the Philippines. It sounds to me like it would be a good thing to get rid of Duterte, but we don't have much to say about that. Right. And I did want to mention, since I couldn't get into the session last week, the current edition of Time Magazine yeah. has an article on China and Latin America. I oh, don't know. Okay, good. I, I have that, but I haven't read it yet. Yes. Yeah. yeah page 52. Okay. Edition. Thank you. That's good to know. Uh, Ken, Ken with the cat. Ken with uh, the cat. <laughs> I think um, that, I think unfortunately, when we watch the, the news here, there really is no emphasis on international affairs anymore. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and unfortunately, we don't really have the exposure to what's going on in that part of the world that, that we should have. Uh, so I'm going to try to make more of, a, of an effort to search out information pertaining to that. But my other observation is that um, Duterte is not the, you know, the the only guy out there that, that's a populist and take sure. advantage of the situation. And, you know, there are many more in Europe, South America, Brazil, uh, mm -hmm. here, and uh, I think it's a trend that we have to be uh, be very aware of and um, and we're wary of. Okay. Uh, if, if people want to keep up on, I get, uh, I subscribe to Foreign Affairs Magazine, which is excellent. It's an excellent journal. Uh, Jason, 20 seconds. What do you got? The, uh, I'll be looking to see uh, how Duterte consolidates his power and uh, tries to manipulate the electoral system so that he can stay in power. Other than that, I think he's just a, a, a case uh, of which there are many cases around the world, as Ken said, of populist leaders, that we're gonna have to see what the Biden administration is gonna do with regard to these people grabbing, maintaining and grabbing more power. Okay, Larry Mortsoff. Uh, I think uh, 
the Biden administration, like uh, other administrations, will tend to look at more in a regional focus. Uh, the Philippines uh, is just not the the, the, the biggest uh, player in terms of, of our, our uh, 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 priorities. Uh, we, we're right now with the China aggression against Taiwan, that, that's occupying a lot of our interest. Okay. Ed, what do you think? Final thoughts? Yeah, seconds. I'd like to uh, hope to have the continuous, uh, the U.S. to make a continuous and persistent uh, presence in the Philippines and also the surrounding nations. Uh, both militarily and economically. Okay. Mike? You know, I think that uh, the text showed us, by the way, this is a really good uh, text that they, it's, it's big boy and girl reading, you know, I mean, it's really <laughs> stuff with information. But I think the text was basically telling us that, that, the, that the, uh, the alliance between the Philippines and the United States is, is at least under, under the surface very strong, and we want them to remain independent. Okay, good, good sum up. Catherine, final thoughts. Well, we don't want to lose the um, naval bases in that area because the Chinese are grabbing up naval things all the way to get to India, mm -hmm. being unobstructed. So it's, I think, important that we stay friendly with the Filipinos and hang on to that. Okay, good point. Ken and Kathy, both of you, what are you, one, of, one at a time. <laughs> I'd like to know. I'd like to know if the Filipino people are better off under this administration. Okay. Good point. The door to yeah. yeah. Um, I would like to see uh, more global coverage in the press. Um, I've been fed up with the press for for years now. <laughs> Okay, well, you got to read the good stuff. Read Foreign Affairs, read The Economist, uh, that's, and so on. And yeah, the information's yeah, there. It's yeah, all out there. First, yeah. And of course, the uh, Great Decisions book, which has good stuff. Yeah. Okay, uh, this wraps up. Next week, we're talking about artificial intelligence. So read up on that. And I think that's about it. Anything else, Tony? Any final? Uh, just um, anybody uh, that doesn't have a book, you could either uh, let me know. We have uh, uh, about five of them over at the Peace Museum, or I'll scan it and I'll send you the reading. Okay. Okay. All right. I guess we can sign off. Thank, right. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank we'll you, see you next week. Thank uh, you. Thank You're you so much. Thank you very much. Have a good oh. week. Thank you. Bye.